Interesting how you make that sound like it's going away. The, uh, the beauty of uh, foot pedal volume control, uh, I guess. Good morning, and welcome to St. Andrew's Anglican Church on this fifth Sunday of Lent. Next Sunday is Palm Sunday, and uh, at 10.30 we'll be meeting in the parish hall, unless you are unable to make the walk. Uh, I know myself I'll be walking with a cane, because I, I, last week I had uh, surgery on my big toe. And uh, so it's real, still really tender. So I was told by um, my boss, Marilyn, that I needed to, uh, to use that assistance for the long walk. But uh, I'm not, she said, you really shouldn't do it. I said, well, I am the priest and I'm supposed to lead the procession. So there's, I can't argue with myself I'm going to do it. Um, but it'll be a bit, we'll meet over there for the blessing of the palm. And by the way, speaking of palms, um, I know Holly has invited folks uh, that if they wanted to make palm crosses at 11 o'clock uh, next Saturday in the parish hall, April 9th, uh, the palms will be there. Uh, I'll have them there. I've gotten short ones for the, uh, the making of the palm crosses. And I also have long ones that we can walk and process with long palms so that this way we can wave them and uh, look like we're from Jerusalem. But uh, it'll be beautiful. 10.30, we'll start with the blessing of the palms and then the procession will be out of the parish hall along. Uh, hopefully the uh, tar stuff will be gone by then. Um, and there's tar all over the walkway in front of the door. But uh, we'll do our best to come through that way. Um, there, we're redoing the roof, and uh, but we'll make it work. I promise, because there is another door, and uh, we'll make it work and head out uh, along Cleveland Street to the sidewalk on Coweta and the sidewalk on um, East Ward Street into the door and into our sanctuary, our nave and sanctuary. Um, this past Thursday and Friday. I had the privilege of being in Tallahassee as a part of the Missional Leadership Alliance, and uh, it's something that I've been a part of since November. Uh, we have a Zoom group, and there are like 20 Zoom groups throughout the diocese, uh, the priests and, and so on. Uh, I've been with five other priests, and uh, we met as a whole group for the Missional Leadership Alliances at the... Uh, uh, in Tallahassee at the cathedral, St. Peter's Cathedral. And it was a great time meeting with uh, our bishop and uh, also with the two candidates to talk with them. And uh, they're wonderful, godly men. And there's information on them, again, in the parish life. Uh, it's the, the Reverend Alex Farmer from Gainesville and uh, the Reverend John Wallace. He's from... Uh, Rosemary Beach, which is near Panama City. Um, the walkabout is May the 2nd for delegate and for uh, clergy. For clergy. And uh, then the uh, election, I believe it was May 17th. Well, anyway, uh, I'll have more information coming up so that you'll be able to. It's, uh, the electing synod is Saturday, May 14th at St. Peter's. Uh, there's more information in here. We've got some birthdays. Will Brawner is celebrating a birthday. Ashley Vickers is celebrating a birthday this week. And uh, God bless them. Uh, there's important dates to remember in here, including uh, our Holy Week lunch for the Coffee Ministerial Association at uh, the First United Methodist Church uh, from the 11th to the 15th. Please don't forget about uh, our Monday, Thursday, Seder. Deacon Bob is going to bring the... Uh, you brought the clipboards down already? Ah. He's going to bring the clipboards down for the Easter lilies sign up and also for the uh, Monday, Thursday, Seder. And that will be at uh, 6 p.m. And the Monday, Thursday service and stripping of the altar will be at 7.30 and you'll see that our Good Friday service is at noon uh, on Friday the uh, 15th. 
And uh, earlier in that week, on Wednesday, uh, we will have, uh, I thought I put it in here, uh, we will have the um, Stations of the Cross that Deacon Bob will be leading on Wednesday. And of course, Easter Sunday, we will meet here in the church. Um, again, please sign up for the Palms uh, for the um, so, uh, Monday, Thursday Seder, as well as for the Easter lilies. And uh, yesterday I had the great honor, Ruth Nance, who has been a member of our parish uh, for a, a short period of time, but she's a wonderful lady. Uh, she and Harmon Moody uh, were wed in the Baptist chapel yesterday and had a small reception in our parish hall. Well, congratulations and many blessings to them, um, George and Jeanette Blampede, Marilyn and I were there, and uh, it was a, a small but beautiful ceremony and reception. And uh, it was really, does your heart good, when a song by a, a Christian man named um, uh, Peter Yarrow, uh, I should say, yeah, it, <laughs> did I say Peter Yarrow? I'm sorry, it's Noel Paul Stuckey. I get confused because Peter and Paul and Mary, they're all in the same group together, Peter, Paul, and Mary. And uh, Noel Paul Stuckey had a hit song in 1971 called The Wedding Song. And so that was played, and he was known as Paul Stuckey then. So it was a beautiful wedding, and uh, we wish them all the best. I'm going to ask you to please stand now, and if you would, open your uh, red hymnals to hymn 150, 40 days and 40 nights. We begin with our acclamation during Lent. Bless the Lord who forgives all our sins. His mercy endures forever. Turning to page 106 in the prayer book, I'd ask you please, kneeling if you're able, to join me as we pray the Collect for Purity. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what our Lord Jesus Christ says. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments depend all the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. 
You may be seated at this point as we will pray the Decalogue. Turn to page 100 in your prayer book. God spoke these words and said, I am the Lord your God. You shall have no other gods but me. Lord, have mercy upon us and incline our hearts to keep this law. The second commandment, you shall not make for yourself any idol. Lord, have mercy upon us and incline our hearts to keep this law. The third commandment, you shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain. The fourth commandment, remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Lord, have mercy us and incline our hearts to keep this law. The fifth commandment, honor your father and your mother. Lord, have mercy us and incline our hearts to keep this law. The sixth commandment, you shall not murder. The seventh commandment, you shall not commit adultery. The eighth commandment, you shall not steal. The ninth commandment, you shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. And the Tenth Commandment, you shall not covet. The Lord have mercy upon us, and our parties and the world of the The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Let us pray. Almighty God, you alone can bring into order the unruly wills and affections of sinners. Grant your people grace to love what you command and desire what you promise that among the swift and varied changes of this world, our hearts may surely there be fixed where true joys are to be found. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And now a prayer for the candidates for bishop. Please join me in praying this in unison. Almighty God, giver of every good gift, Look graciously on your church, and so guide the minds of those who shall be for this diocese, that we may receive a faithful pastor who will preach the gospel, care for your people, equip us for ministry, and lead us forth in fulfillment of the Great Commission. We thank you for raising up Father Alex Farmer and Father John Wallace as candidates and ask that you would bless and strengthen both them and their families and give them your peace during this season of discernment. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Now please be seated for the lessons. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. This is what the Lord says. He who made a way through the sea, a path through the mighty waters, who drew out the chariots and horses, the army and reinforcements together, and and they lay there, never to rise again, extinguished, snuffed out like a wick. Forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. See, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up, do you not perceive it? I am making a way in the desert and streams in the wasteland. The wild animals honor me, the jackals and the owls, because I provide water in the desert and streams in the wasteland to give drink to my people, my chosen, the people I form for myself that they may proclaim my praise. The word of the Lord.
A reading from Paul's letter to the Philippians. But whatever was to my profit, I now consider loss for the sake of Christ. What is more, I consider everything a loss compared to the surpassing greatness of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord, for whose sake I have lost all things. I consider them rubbish, that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness that comes from God and is by faith. I want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of sharing in his sufferings, becoming like him in his death, and so somehow to attain the resurrection from the dead. Not that I have already obtained all this or have already been made perfect, but I press on to take hold of that for which Christ Jesus took hold of me. Brothers, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it, but one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining toward what is ahead, I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. All of us who are mature should take such a view of things. And if on some point you think differently, that too God will make clear to you. Only let us live up to what we have already attained. The word of the Lord. Gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ according to St. Luke. Glory to you, Christ. Jesus went on to tell the people this parable. A man planted a vineyard, rented it to some farmers, and went away for a long time. At harvest time, he sent a servant to the tenants so they would give him some fruit of the vineyard. But the tenants beat him and sent him away empty-handed. He sent another servant but that one also they beat and treated shamefully and sent away empty-handed. He sent still a third, and they wounded him and threw him out. Then the owner of the vineyard said, What shall I do? I will send my son, whom I love. Perhaps they will respect him. But when the tenants saw him, they talked the matter over. This is the heir, they said. Let's kill him and the inheritance will be ours. So they threw him out of the vineyard and killed him. What then will the owner of the vineyard do to them? He will come and kill those tenants and give the vineyard to others. When the people heard this, I said, May this never be. Jesus looked directly at them and asked, Then what is the meaning of that which is written? 
The stone the builders rejected has become a capstone. Everyone who falls on that stone will be broken to pieces, but he on whom it falls will be crushed. The teachers of the law and the chief priests looked for a way to arrest him immediately, because they knew he had spoken his parable against them, but they were afraid of the people. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord. Now, if there are any youngsters who would like to attend Children's Church, you know what to do. Please pray with me. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks and praise during this Holy Lent as we strive to prepare our hearts for Holy Week and to celebrate the resurrection of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord, help us prepare our hearts. Be with us and carry us with your Holy Spirit. We ask all this in the precious name of your Son, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Well, in today's Holy Gospel, Jesus tells the people the parable of the vineyard owner who sent messengers to his tenant farmers, but really to no effect. No first century Jew would have needed to be told that the owner represented God. The farmers were Israel, and the messengers were God's prophets. This landowner had no one left to send, so he sent his own beloved son. This son was the rightful heir of the king, and the farmers were standing in his way. Determined to keep the vineyard for themselves, they threw him out, and they killed him. Sound familiar? I think you'll agree with me. The meaning of this story is pretty obvious and fits the rest of Luke's gospel so far. Jesus, of course, is the rightful heir and has come to complete the work of God's ancient prophets, challenging the people of Israel one more time to give to the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob the honor and obedience that he deserves. Israel was supposed to be producing the fruit of righteousness, and then showing God's grace to the world around them, and really to the entire world. But Israel was self-centered, and insisting on keeping all that grace for itself, practicing injustice in its own life, and repelling and resisting the world around them by whatever violent means may be necessary. Israel rejected the way of peace, and is about to reject the final messenger. The story doesn't stop there because the vineyard owner will return at last. And when he does, the judgment that Israel longed to see meted out on the pagan world would be sentenced instead on them. He will destroy the tenants and give the vineyard to others, the Gentiles. The leadership in Jerusalem and the temple's self-appointed guardians of Israel's law and traditions are really signing their own death warrant. Their rejection of Jesus will be taken up by God into the rebuilding plans of his people. And I quote, The stone the builders rejected, in this case, the Messiah sent to Israel, who they rejected, has become the capstone. Now, these words are from Psalm 118.22, and they use a very different image from that of the vineyard. Ironically, and this should be an aha moment, that the very same psalm is echoed by the crowds in Luke 19.38, as Jesus rode on the back of the colt into the city, when they said, Blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. There should be no irony here. Remember, God really knows what he's doing. He doesn't make mistakes, and there really should be no surprises. And he knows long before we do. Jesus' reference to the capstone or cornerstone 
should remind the people of the construction of the temple under Solomon's reign when massive stones were chiseled away miles from the building in order that no sound could be heard on the temple mount. When the stones arrived, if one stone didn't fit, it was thrown down the hill into the Kidron Valley. When it became evident that the cornerstone was missing, the stone that had been rejected turned out to be the one that fit perfectly. And Jesus applies this to himself. In effect, he's saying, you're trying to build your salvation without me, but you're going to see I am the cornerstone. Without me, nothing stands. Jesus is the stone which does not fit the preconceived notion of the Messiah. He's not coming in riding on a white horse with a sword up in the air. No, he's peaceful. He comes meek and mild, preaching peace. His resurrection from the dead proves that he's the one on whom all eternity is built. Though the leaders of the political world and the religious world may reject Jesus, God has made him the centerpiece of his plan. Though people, even all people, reject him and refuse to build their life upon him and his word, there's no replacement of or for God's precious and chosen son, his cornerstone, Jesus. Quoting this verse at this point absolutely rams his message home. The workers may reject Jesus now, but they'll find very soon that he will be vindicated. Soon he will be seen as the true Messiah. He will build a true temple, and he himself will be its chief feature, the standard by which everything and everyone else is to be judged. Amazing. I keep thinking to myself, when Jesus comes again, how many people will look up as he comes and fall to their knees and say, now I see you, Jesus. Please forgive me. I just can't help but think that. And I pray that those of us will be ready beforehand and we'll just be singing, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord as he appears on the clouds in great glory with his angels. And I'm afraid that it very well may be the rejection and violence and the history of Christian martyrdom and persecution will stand to be a glaring witness to what might happen. But the good news is that the vineyard owner will have the last word. What happens to Jesus was a decisive victory. Ever since then, his followers have gone on their mission to declare that their life, their words, and their actions, that his church has already triumphed in Jesus, that the renewed vineyard is bearing fruit, that the new temple is being built with its cornerstone already in place, Christ himself. Verse 15 and 16 of today's gospel revealed the ultimate result of callousness and hardness of the man's heart against God's rule. So, they threw him out of the vineyard and killed him. What then will the owner of the vineyard do to them? He will come and kill those tenants and give the vineyard to others. When the people heard this, they said, May this never be. The rejection of the message and the messengers is harsher each time. Ultimately, instead of remorse and repenting, they do the exact opposite. Those rebellious tenors killed the beloved son, a glimpse of the foreshadowing of the faith that awaits Jesus in Jerusalem. Hebrews 13, 12 to 13 says, well, and so Jesus also suffered outside the city gate to make the people holy through his own blood. Let us then go to him outside the camp bearing the disgrace he bore. My friends, that's what Lent is all about, preparing. 
that son is killed outside the vineyard or camp, and it evidenced that was written by the author of Hebrews. God used the image of a vineyard numerous times throughout the words of the prophets Isaiah and Ezekiel. And these people understood the implication, and they were stunned at the word of final punishment on the tenants, feeling that they too will fall with the nation as God turns over the vineyard to the Gentiles. The Holy Gospel says that they wanted to kill Jesus right then, but they were afraid of the reaction of the people. Jesus' prophetic words were another opportunity for the Jewish leaders to repent and turn back to God. He was pleading with them to turn to God in truth and save not only their own lives, but the life of the whole nation of Israel. So what was their answer? They responded with a tragically unrepentant, may this never be. The crowd's strong negative response indicates that they understood what Jesus was saying. The Jewish system was being set aside because the religious leaders themselves were rejecting him, and the people, of course, like lemmings, were following their leadership instead of God's. And this parable sums up all of Jesus' messages concerning the fact that the Gentiles and outcasts, the tax collectors, the sinners, as they repented, would be added to the kingdom because Israel would not recognize and submit to Jesus' authority. Verse 18 says that those who will not fall upon this stone in brokenness of repentance will have the stone fall upon them in judgment. It says, everyone who falls on that stone will be broken into pieces, but he on whom it falls will be crushed. The capstone, or cornerstone, is a tremendous image that Jesus is saying, he's the means of repentance and judgment. Rejecting God's beloved son by failing to cast your, uh, failing to cast your life upon him has serious consequences. All you have to do is read John 3, 16 to 18. Those who believe are saved. Those who do not believe are condemned already. The Apostle Paul wrote, Every knee shall bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus is Lord. Philippians 2.10 The only question is, will your life be broken by God's precious cornerstone? Or will you, and will you cast your life upon him now? to be broken before him in repentance and, or, and saved? Or will you wait too long and be broken and crushed by him when he returns to judge the world? Again, that vision of God come, Jesus coming back with his holy angels and how many people, including many Jews, falling on their faces and saying, it is Jesus. How they wish they had been able to accept him beforehand. The Apostle Peter wrote this in 1 Peter 2, 6. For in Scripture it says, See, I lay a stone in Zion, a chosen and precious cornerstone, and the one who trusts in him will never be put to shame. Now today we have all sorts of people, all kinds of experts giving advice. Somebody has something to say about everything. Sometimes it runs in circles. Just turn on TV or radio, especially with some of those infomercials, and there's a subject matter expert giving advice on just about everything. The only one true and trustworthy expert is Jesus Christ. He gives us the absolute certain truth, which is recorded for us in Holy Scripture. If we repent and fall upon Christ as the new cornerstone of our life, our life will be broken to pieces. But by trusting in him and living for him, we can rebuild it upon the chosen cornerstone of, external, of eternal existence. If we fall upon Jesus and build our life upon him, we will never, ever be put to shame. My brothers and sisters in Christ, it's never too early to begin to build a life based and built upon this cornerstone, the solid foundation. His name is Jesus of Nazareth, Jesus Christ.
I love Jesus' words in Matthew chapter 7 when he told his disciples that there were two men. One man built his house upon the sand. The wind blew and the storms came. And what happened to that house? It was washed away. The other man built his house upon the solid rock. And when the winds came, the storms came, it stood. That's the foundation, the rock on which we build our faith. Jesus Christ, the righteous. I let Satan give us his best shot. But Christ stands with us. And we will stand with him for all eternity. Jesus, the one who was rejected, we choose to be our cornerstone. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I ask you now to please stand and open your prayer books to page 109. And let us confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is visible and invisible. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, eternally begotten, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory, judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And now, kneeling if you're able, please turn to page 110 as we pray the prayers of the people. Let us pray for the church and for the world, saying, Hear our prayer. Almighty and ever-living God, we are taught by your holy word to offer prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all people. We humbly ask that you mercifully ask you mercifully to receive our prayers. Inspire continuously the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity, and concord, and grant that all who confess your holy name may agree in the truth of your holy word and live in unity and godly love. Lord, in your mercy, we pray that you will lead the nations of the world in the way of righteousness and so guide and direct their leaders, especially Joseph, our president, that your people may enjoy the blessings of freedom and peace. Grant that our leaders may impartially administer justice, uphold integrity and truth, restrain wickedness and vice, and protect true religion and virtue. Lord, in your mercy. Give grace, Heavenly Father, to all bishops, priests, and deacons, and especially to your servants Foley, our archbishop, Neil, our bishop, John, our priest, Robert and Diane, our deacons, that by their life and teaching they may proclaim your true and life-giving word and rightly and duly administer your holy sacraments. And to all your people give your heavenly grace, especially to this congregation, that with reverent and obedient hearts we may hear and receive your holy word and serve you in holiness and righteousness all the days of our lives. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Prosper, we pray, all those who proclaim the gospel of your kingdom throughout the world and strengthen us to fulfill your great commission 
making disciples of all nations, baptizing them and teaching them to obey all that you have commanded. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We ask you in your goodness, O oh Lord, to, com to comfort and sustain all who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. Today we especially pray for Jake, Stone, Elizabeth, Addison, Leela, Denzel, Terry, Phil, Tamara, Camden, Denny, Kim, David, Doris, Jackson, Ralph, Suzanne, Ken, Benita, Sherry, Maxie, Judy, Susie, Bob, Daya, Jane, Ed, Jackie, Eli, Kathy, Sheila, Janelle, Billy, Zenda, Marty, Ted, Karen, Carrie, Joyce, Courtney, Jeanette, Jake, Mac, Francis, Chris, Tracy, Johnny, Christine, Bruce, Fisher, Father John, Bishop Neal, and all who protect our freedoms at home and abroad. I invite you to add your own requests at this time. Lord, we are grateful for the healing of family and friends. We stand against the enemy in this virus. Please extinguish this virus. Bless and protect our first responders, doctors, nurses, as well as teachers and students. Grant wisdom among all your people that we would proceed today and in the days ahead, caring for one another in love. Lord, in your mercy. We remember before you all your servants who have departed this life in your faith and fear, especially the family of Constance Campbell, Don's daughter, who was buried yesterday, that your will for them may be fulfilled. And we ask you to give us grace to follow the good examples of Andrew and all your saints that we may share with them in your heavenly kingdom. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, Grant these our prayers for the sake of Jesus Christ, our only mediator and advocate, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now turning to page 112, at the bottom of the page, let us humbly confess our sins to Almighty God as we pray this together. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker and judge of us all. We acknowledge and lament of our many sins and offenses which we have committed by thought, word, and deed against your divine majesty, provoking most justly your righteous anger against us. We are deeply sorry for these transgressions. The burden of them is more than we can bear. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. For your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may evermore serve and please you in newness of life, to the honor and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who in his great mercy has promised forgiveness of sins to all those who sincerely repent and with true faith turn to him, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the word of God to all who truly turn to him. Jesus said, come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. And if anyone sins, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. He is the propitiation for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. Please stand. 
The peace of the Lord be always with you. Let us share with one another a sign of Christ's peace. Please be seated. A week from tomorrow, on the 11th of April, meeting is at 6 o'clock in the parish hall. Just wanted to throw that reminder out. And again, for our procession on Palm Sunday, uh, and yes, we are bringing processions back in on Sunday mornings. Uh, at this point, we'll be processing in, but... We're not processing out just yet, and there's a reason for that, but we're trying to bring a little bit more Anglican back into our service so that we may do it all for his glory. But if you can't regular reading of the Holy Gospel, but instead it's the reading of the Passion according to Luke, in which case you will have a fold-out in your bulletin, and there are parts that we all play. And so I will ask you to... uh, Join us with that and with the resounding part of the people and the crowd. Be with it. And uh, we ask you to do that. Um, There was one other thing I wanted to remind you about uh, once again. uh, But I'll think of it and tell you before the end. So now walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us. A fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. turning to page 115 of the prayer book the Lord be with you and with your spirit. lift up your hearts we lift 
and mother to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right. Our duty and our joy always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. You bid your faithful people cleanse their hearts and prepare with joy for the Paschal Feast, that fervent in prayer and in works of mercy and renewed by your word and sacraments, they may come to the fulfillment of grace which you have prepared for those who love you. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Let us pray. All praise and glory is yours, O God, our Heavenly Father, for in your tender mercy you gave your only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption. He made there by his one oblation of himself, once offered, a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation, and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world. And he instituted and in his holy gospel commanded us to continue a perpetual memory of his precious death and sacrifice until his coming again. So now, O merciful Father, in your great goodness, we ask you to bless and sanctify with your word and Holy Spirit these gifts of bread and wine, that we, receiving them according to your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. For on the night that he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, Jesus took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this in remembrance of me. Therefore, O Lord and Heavenly Father, according to the institution of your dearly beloved Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, we, your humble servants, celebrate and make here before your divine majesty with these holy gifts the memorial your Son commanded us to make, remembering his blessed passion and precious death, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and his promise to come again. And here we offer and present to you, O Lord, ourselves, our souls, and bodies to be a reasonable, holy, and living sacrifice. We humbly pray that all who partake of this holy communion may worthily receive the most precious body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ, be filled with your grace and heavenly benediction, and be made one body with him, so that he may dwell in us, and we in him. By him, and with him, and in him. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, 
All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Together, on page 119 of the prayer book, we do not presume to come to this your table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your abundant and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table, but you are the same Lord, whose character is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on them in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Earth, Earth. Thank you. Thank you. I'm trying to think of everything. Ask you to please turn to page 121 of the prayer book and let us pray. Almighty and ever living God, we thank you for feeding us in these holy mysteries with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us through this sacrament of your favor and goodness towards us that we are true members of the mystical body of your Son, the blessed company of all faithful people, and are also heirs through hope of your everlasting kingdom. And we humbly ask you, Heavenly Father, to assist us with your grace, that we may continue in that holy fellowship and do all the good works that you have prepared for us to walk in. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. And now... May the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you today and always. I ask you now to please stand and open your red hymnals to him 555. Lead on, O King Eternal. Peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. It always sounds like there's something missing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Just wait.